Hello everyone, thanks for clicking on this video. Uh, so in this short video, I will be describing about how to differentiate between syndesmophyte or osteophyte. So let's start with the case. This is a case of a 48 year old male uh, who presented with pain and stiffness in lower back and multiple joints pain for uh, 20 years. So this is the AP radiograph of the pelvis uh, of this patient and we can see there is decreased bone density. Uh, there is uh, diffuse osteopenia involving almost all the bones visualized in this radiograph. And there is uh, bilateral protrusio acetabuli. And there is uh, bony ankylosis involving the right hip joint. Uh, there is fluffy periosteal uh, ossification involving the bilateral ischial tuberosity known as ischial disc ring. And there is uh, ankylosis of bilateral sacroiliac joint. Plus, there is ossification of the interspinous and supraspinous ligaments, giving an appearance of uh, dagger sign. And there is uh, fusion of multiple vertebral bodies because of ossification of the annulus fibrosus, forming syndesmophyte. And there is ossification of uh, the ligamentum flavum, fusion of uh, the facet joint. So uh, this, uh, the ossification of the interspinous and supraspinous ligament, it gives an appearance of dagger sign. Whereas uh, these three lines, uh, the uh, two, the lateral one and uh, third is the middle uh, interspinous one. And these three lines give an appearance of the trolley track sign. So this is a case of ankylosing spondylitis, uh, having multiple uh, changes in the bones and joints which we can see. This is the lateral radiograph of the same patient where we can see there is severe kyphosis involving the dorsal lumbar spine and there is extensive syndesmophytosis bridging across the virtual bodies giving uh, appearance of bombo spine. And there is fusion of uh, multiple facet joint as well. Let's see a similar case of a 40 years old male who presented with similar complaints and we can see uh, similar uh, kyphotic deformity involving the dorsal spine and presence of multiple syndesmophytes which are bridging across the vertebral bodies. This is the cervical spine radiograph of the same patient. We can see there is presence of syndesmophyte again bridging across the vertebral bodies and in the dorsal spine we can see presence of dragger sign. Let's move to a different case. This is a case of 55 years old female with low back ache. This is the lateral radiograph of the lumbar spine. She is an obese female and we can see presence of multiple large osteophytes. So uh, when we compare these osteophytes with the syndesmophyte we saw in previous cases, we can see that the osteophytes are thick and they are not uh, exactly along the long axis of the spine so they are in a different direction initially they are vertical uh, initially they are perpendicular to the spine then they take a turn they are uh, more thick than the syndesmophyte so these are osteophytes now when we talk about the differences between uh, syndesmophyte and osteophyte the basic difference is the pathogenesis so what is the pathogenesis behind uh, formation of syndesmophyte so for that, we need to understand what is normal enthesis. So the normal enthesis is the normal blending of a ligament or tendon with a bone. And what is enthesopathy is presence of infl infl inflammatory infiltrates at the attachment site of the tendon or ligament with the bone. And because of this enthesopathy, there is, uh, this leads to formation of new bone at uh, the site of inflammation. And this enthesopathy is the basic pathogenesis which leads to various radiographic signs in cases of seronegative spondyloarthropathy. So we can see this image illustration in which uh, we can differentiate between uh, syndesmophyte and osteophyte. So what happens in uh, seronegative spondyloarthropathy? There is inflammation at the uh, corners of the vertebral bodies where there is attachment of the ligament. And this leads to formation of ruminous lesion, shiny corner sign. And finally, there is ossification of the annulus fibrosus. There is ossification of the ligamentum flavum. 
and there is ossification of the interspinous and supraspinous ligament there is fusion of the uh, bony and gyloses of the uh, facet joints whereas in degenerative spine disease uh, it, uh, there is uh, disc desiccation decreased height of the intervertebral disc disc bulge and plate irregularity sclerosis and formation of osteophytes which are uh, entirely different from the syndesmophyte so there is no ossification of the annulus fibrosus there is no ossification of the ligamentum flavum and there is no ossification of the interspinous and supraspinous ligaments second difference is uh, involvement of si joint and other large joints so we saw in our previous case first case in which there is uh, there was uh, bony and kyloses of the hip joint and bony and kyloses of bilateral sacroiliac joint and there was severe kyphotic deformity in the dorsal lumbar spine uh, patient was only 48 year old so uh, this is not uh, the kyphosis what we see in degenerative spine disease so there is severe kyphotic deformity and because this case was a case of zero negative spondyloarthropathy so involvement of SI joint and other large joint goes in favor of uh, uh, seronegative spondyloarthropathy. Third difference is age and gender and uh, positivity of HLA-B27. So HLA-B27 is positive in cases of seronegative spondyloarthropathy and uh, these cases are generally young males whereas degenerative spine disease affects elderly age group uh, irrespective of the gender the last difference is the difference of appearance the radiographic appearance so syndesmophytes are fine delicate and they are along the long axis of the spine they bridge across the vertebral bodies and uh, uh, the osteophytes are thick they are broad at base and they are not exactly along the line of the spine so initially they are perpendicular to the spine then they take a turn and they can articulate with each other uh, forming a pseudo joint and uh, it, is, uh, it does not bridge across the vertebral bodies entirely uh, osteophytes are also of two types initially they, there is formation of traction osteophyte which is uh, perpendicular to the long axis of spine then uh, when the traction osteophytes they increase in size they take a turn and uh, form a claw osteophyte which may articulate with another claw osteophyte from the adjacent vertebral body whereas when we talk about the types of syndesmophytes there are four types uh, the first one is marginal complete in which the syndesmophyte bridges across the uh, uh, Two vertebral bodies and they start from the margin of the vertebral body so this is marginal complete and this type is seen in ankylosing spondylitis uh, second type is non-marginal complete which starts from the mid vertebral body and it bridges across uh, the complete extent so it attaches the two vertebral bodies so it is complete and it is non-marginal the third one is the comma shaped uh, incomplete non marginal type which starts from the mid vertebral body but it does not reach up to the adjacent vertebral body and the last one is the floating syndesmophyte which does not attach to the vertebral body so it is completely floating so these last three types are uh, more commonly seen in psoriatic arthropathy reactive arthritis and tropathic arthropathy Whereas the first one, this complete marginal one, is the characteristic feature of ankylosing spondylitis. So this was all about uh, uh, how to differentiate between syndesmophyte and osteophyte. I hope you have enjoyed the video and cleared your concepts. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Thank you.